Hey everyone, this is Kendall from the Recording Lounge Podcast. Today I thought I would do a video about patch bays, how they work, how the different setups affect the routing, and why you need one. So this is a long-awaited video a lot of people have asked me for, so uh, here it is. So, these are my four patch bays. I have three input bays and one output bay. And first, I'm going to describe how I have these set up, and then we'll go into how patch bays work. So, in my particular studio, I've got a lot of outboard mic preamps. They all come in to the back of this patch bay. And I've got a lot of outboard gear, like compressors and EQs. Those all come in onto this second bay, again, in the back. Now this third bay is more of a utility thing. I have a couple of extra preamps here, some oddball things. I have a couple of other random pieces of outboard gear that don't quite fit with these. These are like, um, I have a pedal board at line level that I can run, you know, drum mics to or whatever. I have a, a spring reverb unit, but these are mostly compressors and EQs. This is a couple of oddball things. Then over here I have a couple of utility things like uh, headphone mixes and my talkback mic is up on the bay as well if I happen to want to put my talkback mic through some outboard gear for whatever reason. And then all of my outputs, so my headphone mixes, my main mix output, my buses, they all go to this bay. Again, everything is routed in the back to and from my interface to, you know, the output here and the output here go to the interface and then all my preamps and outboard gear come onto these two bays. So let's go into talking about how patch bays actually work and the different configurations that we have uh, at our disposal. Okay, so the first way that we can set up a patch bay is something called through. And what this means is that by default, the jacks on the back will connect straight through to the jacks on the front, meaning the bottom jack in the rear will connect to the bottom jack in the front top jack in the rear to the top jack in the front. Now, this is how we set up outboard gear. Now, I'll show you how this works. Let's say you have a compressor. By default, you will set this compressor to go here and here. So you'll connect cables from the compressor output and input. So this is in and this is out. So if you need to go into this piece of gear, you need to go into the bottom and out from the top. Typically speaking, patch bays are gonna be set up out over in. Uh, there are some exceptions to that, but in general, that's how I set it up, the output over the input. And uh, so you would run little patch cables like this, right? It would plug in. This essentially now is your signal. So you'd plug into the patch bay. This then traces along, goes to the compressor, comes out of the compressor, and you would need a second patch cable to plug out and go to wherever you need to go. We'll talk about that here in just a second. Okay, so another way that we can set up patch bays is a setup called normal or normaled operation. Now, by default, a normal setup will connect the rear, top, and bottom jacks by default, like so, unless you plug something in to the front. Now, depending on the patch bay, this might be slightly different, but usually what happens is if you plug in something to either jack, that becomes a through connection. So if I plugged in something here, this is now a through connection going from this side to this side, and this now goes nowhere. This does not go through to the front. If I plug in something here, it then does go to the front. So essentially, this is now a throughput patch bay. If you plug in something here and here, it's just a normal throughput patch bay. If nothing is plugged into the front, it just connects rear bottom to rear top. So why would you want this type of setup? Well, this is how I have my mic pre set up. So let's say you have a mic pre and your interface. And by default, you want your mic pre to connect into your interface like that until you plug something in. So for me, my mic pre that is on snake channel one 
goes to the first mic pre in my rack, which then goes to patch bay channel one, which then goes to interface channel one. Now you can set up your entire rig with throughput patch bays, but I like doing the normal operation for preamps because it's less cabling. Some people would normally set up their patch bay, uh, well, no pun intended, they would set it up on throughput style. And if they wanted to go from mic pre number one into interface number 20, they would do that by using a throughput patch bay. They have a row of mic pre's, a row of interface inputs, and they'd run a cable one to the other. To me, that's unnecessary cabling. Uh, and this way, it does it all very simply and easily and automatically connects mic pre one to patch bay channel one to interface channel one. Of course, if I need to swap that around, I can, but in general, it makes it easier to remember and it uses less cabling. So if I wanted to go to a piece of outboard gear, which again, we would set up this bay through style. And let's say this is a compressor, which again, we'd connect here and here in out. I'll grab a couple of cables. And again, through is like this. By default, this mic pre will normal into the interface. But if I plug in a cable here, I would want to go to my compressor, oops, like this. Let's see if I can get this to cooperate. All right, that'll have to do. Now, if I then go out from our compressor, need to go back in to this patch bay, like so. So the reason I have mine set up like this is because I go bottom to bottom, top to top. And I'm going to show you that in just a minute. But this is how I route to outboard gear. My compressors and EQs are set up on the through patch bays. My mic preamps are set up on the normal patch bay. And I just run a cable from the front bottom jack to the front bottom jack on the compressor and the top jack to the top jack. And the connection flows as follows. Out from the mic pre into the patch bay, which normally would go here but because I'm plugging into the front, it breaks the connection. I'm now going through here, which goes into our compressor input from the compressor output back through this cable up and back on to our interface. Another configuration that we have is something called half normaled. Now this is a little bit more rare to see, but every now and then it can come in handy. So the way that at least my patch, ba patch bays do half normaling is by default, just like with normaled operation, our back, bottom, and top will connect to each other. However, it's a little bit different in that if I plug something into the top jack, essentially this splits, but this also remains. So this connection pretty much always exists unless you plug something into the bottom front jack. I'm gonna get a different color for this. If you plug something into the bottom front jack, you then get a straight through here, and this is broken. This is a little bit confusing, I know. You might ask, why would I need half normaled? And really, one of the easiest explanations is for splitting. Because if I, again, have my mic pre, and my interface like this, and this is connected like that. If I plug in something to the top jack, my mic pre channel goes like so. So I have a split of my mic pre. So my mic pre output. So I use half normaling when I need to split something from the mic pre and maybe I'm going straight in to record a dry signal. And then this, I would run into a compressor or a reverb or an EQ or you know a processed chain. And then I have this dry chain as well. So that's really the main reason why somebody might use 
half normaled. Some people might also use this to do what's called a listen function, essentially where you could plug in, in theory, a pair of headphones into this top jack and listen to just this mic pre, which would still be going on through to your interface, but you could essentially listen into the signal by splitting it off. Now, it wouldn't be very loud for headphones, depending on what headphones you're using, but you get the idea is that it's kind of like normal, but it's different. In general, if you do break the connections on both jacks, if you plug into both, you can get straight through, straight through. Okay, so now that you have a basic idea of how patch bays work, I'll show you how it applies in my setup. So again, this first patch bay here, I consider this my first patch bay, this is my mic preamp patch bay, and it is normaled, meaning the mic pre that comes on the back here goes by default to the top jack in the rear, which goes into my interface. Now, you could look at this as though I set it up in over out. You could look at it that way if you were considering in over uh, into the interface on the top. Now, the reason I did that is is because physically this is above this patch bay and it just makes sense to have the output uh, of the on the rear go to the input here. So this second bay again is my outboard bay. All of these are set up through. Now with these samps and patch bays, uh, they have a little switch on the front that allow you to select normaled, through, or half normaled, okay? So I'll, over, I'll give you an overview again. I go from the mic preamp patch bay, which defaults into my interface. If I need to go somewhere, I can break the connection by plugging into the front bottom jack. Now my signal is here. If I wanted to go into, let's say, an 1176, I could plug into the input on the bottom jack, then go out from the 1176 back to the same channel I had before bottom to bottom, top to top. That's why I set mine up this way. Makes it really easy. Now, let's say I wanted to go from a mic pre into an EQ and then to a compressor, and then I wanted to go to a different channel on my interface. Okay, so let's say I go from this mic pre and I go into an EQ. Here's an API EQ, bottom to bottom. Now. If I go out of the EQ, here's my signal now, I go into the bottom on a compressor. And then I go from the top of that to let's say channel 16. This is how I would route that. Again, following the signal, channel two here, by default will route to channel two on the interface. I'm going out on the bottom jack. Here's my signal now. I'll just clear these out of the way. Here's my signal. I go into my EQ, bottom jack. Now from the output of the EQ, here's my signal, to the input of the compressor. Okay. Now out of the compressor, here's my signal, into interface input 16. The way you could almost look at this setup is that the top row is my interface inputs and the bottom row is my mic pre outputs, okay? Now again, if you set up your entire setup with through patch bays, then this is really a little more obvious because there's only one connection that can be made, the bottom to the bottom, the top to the top, uh, front to back, you know what I mean? Now a lot of people have their patch bays set up like that and it's totally fine. Um, most TT patch bays are set up that way as well. Okay, so let's look at an example of half-normaled operation. Let's say I wanted to record a vocal, and I wanted to record it dry, completely dry, straight to the interface chain, but I also wanted to record a really heavily compressed parallel chain. So let's say I'm using preamp one here that goes right on the patch bay. I first need to switch this to half-normaled operation, so now it is in half-normaled mode, and that means that it's connecting in the back straight through. So I've got channel one already recording. Now with half normaled, I go to the top jack 
and now my signal is here as well as on channel one by default. So now I'm gonna to go to a compressor, let's say a distressor, I'm going into the bottom jack. I go out of the distressor into maybe an EQ, bottom jack, and then out of the EQ, let's say I go to channel eight. So now what I have is my vocal chain going straight through into channel one, connecting in the back, totally dry. It splits off of that signal, goes to a processed signal, and the second processed output comes into channel eight. I hope this has given you a little bit of background on patch bays, how they work, and uh, you know why you need one. All I can really say is it makes routing so much easier and quicker. I never have to reach behind my desk, behind my rack to reroute one piece of gear to another piece of gear or one channel to another channel. It's all done right here on the top with little one foot patch cables like this. Now, another benefit of having a TT patch bay rather than a quarter inch patch bay like this is you can fit twice as many channels in one rack unit as you can with this. Now for me, I don't have a huge setup. Like I said, my interface is 32 ins and 32 outs, uh, and I don't even use all of them. So if I really needed more, I actually have more rack spaces. I could get rid of this or move this to the rear of the rack or something like that, and I could still do it with quarter inch patch bays. The other reason is that long ago, when I was first starting and I only had one or two patch bays and way less gear, I invested in a bunch of cabling that was quarter inch. So it went XLR from the output of gear to quarter inch. So I have tons of XLR to TRS quarter inch cabling that goes into the back here. So if I went to a different type of patch bay, I'd have to get all new cabling as well. And we all know how expensive that can be. So anyway, I hope this has been informative. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Uh, check out the Recording Lounge podcast. Make sure read the manual, okay? If you're not exactly sure, if you're not if you're not exactly positive if what I said applies to your particular patch bay, read the manual, okay? I can't I can't stress it enough. It's so important for you to know what your gear is doing. But in this case, this is how these work. Um, anyway, thanks for watching the video, guys. Please leave a like and a comment. Please subscribe to my channel, and I'll talk to you next time.